Throughout history, God has used what some would consider tragedies to bring miracles, deliverance, and future hope to those who call upon His name. Specifically, as in the case of David and Goliath, God took the weapon formed against David, allowing David to use that exact weapon to cut off Goliath's head. From these experiences, God grows a person's faith so they learn that through their faith in God, all things are possible. And the so-called tragedy that had come to destroy God's people proves to be a stepping stone to a higher level of relationship with their God. However, in other instances, some setbacks were designed for a time of sifting, a sifting of wheat from the chaff and sheep from the goats. Such was the case in Egypt at the time of Moses' ministry. The Pharaoh of Egypt had hardened his heart towards God. The request from Moses to free the children of Israel was met with laughter and contempt. The Pharaoh had forgotten that captivity was initiated 400 years earlier, when Joseph, a Jewish slave, was used mightily to save Egypt from a seven-year famine. It was then that the Jewish God, through Joseph, brought prosperity to the land. But now 400 years later, the Jews had become a footstool to the whims of the Egyptians. The ten plagues that came upon the Egyptians were specifically used as signs and wonders to warn the Egyptians of coming disaster. Scripture says that God literally allowed their unbelieving hearts to be hardened, or what we might define today as secular, concerning their belief in God. With each of the ten plagues that came upon Egypt, God's people were delivered from the plagues. However, Pharaoh's hatred and obstinance towards God was reflected by further persecution of God's people, a mistake that he would soon live to regret. Through the obedience of his servant Moses, the rivers were turned to blood, the weather became erratic, the crops were destroyed by hail, the ecosystem was overturned by millions of frogs, their economic system was destroyed. Every sign and wonder that happened defied every god that the Egyptians depended on for their sustenance. And with every sign, was the invisible hand of God trying to showcase to humanity that without His divine intervention, man's efforts to rule this planet are futile. Disobedience to God's eternal and moral code of ethics will always result in disaster. However, as the children of Israel walked across the dry bedrock of the Red Sea, they celebrated that their Most High God is a God of miraculous signs and wonders and a deliverer of those who trust in His name. The Egyptian army and Pharaoh also learned the hard way that there is no other God in heaven nor on the earth like unto the God of Israel. Throughout Jewish history, God had promised His people that before any calamity would come, He would do nothing unless He first revealed it to His servants, the prophets. But what about today? If calamity is coming, how would God warn us? Would He use prophets, calamities, worldwide plagues in order to get our attention? Hello folks, welcome to Prophecy USA. My name is Rick Pearson, this is my wife Karen, and this podcast is a, a podcast that's designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us. We're having a lot of people now join in. Last week we had over 4,000 people uh, join us over the week, and we have all kinds of comments from all kinds of people and 98% of them are very, very good. So we appreciate everyone that's listening to us. Um, we also uh, we want to remind you that we have a TV app, uh, an app that you can get, which we're going to give an advertisement and show you how to get that. So you can get every TV show and every Bible podcast. This is our 24th, 24th Hard to believe. podcast since we started it in March. We started it in March, I think. I'm sorry. March or April. But anyway, we went 14 days in a row because of the COVID. We went 14 days in a row and then we started to back that off. Now today, we just recorded last week six more teaching episodes that will be going on TV. So now we have 19. Those will not go on the app until they're shown on television. So for, for, for some of you that started right at the beginning, you're going to notice that we're repeating some shows because we got 12 and we're rotating them. Mm -hmm. Now we have six more. And then we have to go to the CRT and apply for another 24. So in the fall, we'll be making more. Um, 
I've just got so much in me here. It takes me around 40 hours to write one TV show. And, and the reason it takes so long is because I inundate every paragraph with the Word of God. We try to stay right focused on the Word. Now, we're going to learn in today's program some of the questions. I'm going to explain some things on how the Bible was written. But the Bible's written for your interpretation. And uh, there's 31,000 denominations, and many people have different interpretations of Scripture. Mm -hmm. My interpretation of Babylon in the Bible is a very, very small percentage because it's a new revelation. And I'm going to explain that, how that in the last days we have progressive revelation that we see things in the last days that even 50 years ago people couldn't see. But now we see things, and uh, I'll, I'll explain that a little later. But anyway, what we, what we like to do is uh, if any of you have prayer requests, please feel free to write down your prayer requests, and we will pray for you uh, at the end of the show. Uh, Karen has some, some folks here that have sent some uh, comments. And K Karen, what is our first comment that we've got? The first comment from the last live podcast was from Marty. And Marty said, I really learned a lot from this one. Thank you. Okay, Marty, you're going to learn a lot more. Because <laughs> 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 I'm digging up so much stuff now. It's, it's amazing, as I have totally committed to this podcast and to the TV show, uh, as you get into the Word, God gives you more scriptures to confirm what you believe he told you. If it's revelation knowledge, there's always more scriptures to confirm what God has given you. Mm -hmm. If it's not revelation knowledge, you can't find any more scriptures. But it's, it, there's, there's a saying in, this, in the Bible that says, line upon line and precept upon precept, that it builds. And this, this verse connects with that one and that verse, and they all come together and then you see the big picture. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are right now with America's role in Bible prophecy. We started March the 15th broadcasting in the States, and we started in February in Canada. But the COVID-19 is a second warning. 9-11 was the first warning, and that's actually found in Isaiah 9-11, uh, where Isaiah prophesied and said that the attack on Israel in Isaiah 9, 10, and 11 was a warning from God. And then they, they went and read that same verse in Congress saying, we will rebuild and we will, we will restore and we will rebuild and we will replace the uh, sycamore tree with the coniferous tree. Cedar. And all of those things were great but the problem was in Isaiah's day, he said, you guys have missed the point. You're saying, we will, we will. This is God warning you to come back to him. America was in the same process in 9-11. Exactly. A lot of people were nervous and got scared. And there were a lot of people praying for America. But now here we are almost 20 years later. And we've got people rebelling against America, trying to pull down her covenant, not wanting God in government in schools, and there is a battle for the soul of America. And we saw this all coming. Uh, I, I saw this coming 34 years ago, and I could hardly comprehend what I was receiving. But now, as things are rolling out, the things that were said to me are, there it is, there it is, there it is. Pieces of the puzzle. And 53 descriptions in the Bible referring to this Latter-day Nation of Babylon is all in the study guide that we've produced. Many of you have the study guide, but when I received this in, in 1986, 1986, I didn't know any of these scriptures were in, in the Bible. Now that you study to show thyself approved, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. 
as we present this to you, you as a Christian who has heard God's voice, who's asked him into your heart, now can hear directly from the Lord by reading this book. You do not have to go to somebody to get a prophetic word. God speaks directly to you through this book. And this book is alive. This book tells the end from the beginning. So somewhere between Genesis chapter 1 and Revelation chapter 2, the end has not come here yet. Somewhere in this Bible is a page and a verse where our generation fits. And I believe that verse is Revelation 17, uh, 12, where the, the beast and the ten horns, who have not yet received power, uh, will hate the woman. And we believe the woman is the United States of America. And we are at the end of the book, folks. Now, for America to meet the descriptions of Babylon the Great, which is the seventh of eighth kingdoms, she must meet all 53 descriptions. And she does. Unfortunately, the 54th description has to do with her judgment. And we are not judging America. We're just discerning the signs of the time. And it's up to us to warn people what we have been shown. So we are warning people of what we have seen coming and we're confirming it in the word. And as you listen to this, do not take my word for it. You get the study guide and get the app and listen to it and ask God to speak to you. Mm -hmm. and say, Lord, show us. Now, we've got people that are coming against us, not in a bad way, but they just don't agree with us. They don't agree with how we interpret scripture. And I would like to remind you that there's 31,000 denominations, Christian denominations around the world. <laughs> and there's a whole lot of conflict on what this verse means and that verse means. Mm -hmm. But you will be judged on how you interpret the word and how you treat others. The number one thing Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and you fulfilled all the law. Isn't that nice? He doesn't judge us by our IQ. He doesn't judge us by our knowledge. He judges us by how we're kind to other people. Yes. So you have to have a kind heart towards other people. And when people don't agree with you, you have to respond in kindness and say, that's okay, I understand. So um, all through the Bible, there's been opposition and differences of opinion. And it doesn't mean one person's good and the other person's bad. It just means you see things differently. Mm -hmm. And we try not, uh, I try not to get angry at people who sometimes uh, are a little obstinate and they come off and they start accusing you and calling you a false teacher and a false prophet because you don't see things exactly the way they do. Well, we can agree to disagree. And even in a marriage, that's the way it is, isn't it? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but as I've many times I've said to Karen, Karen, it's only my opinion, but, but I'm, I'm right. right. <laughs> No, we get along pretty good. And I think we have, we have a pretty good, uh, God's given me a good wife. Uh, there's a lot of folk that are arguing and it's a, there's a big line drawn in the sand. There's people who believe in pre-trib and those who don't believe in pre-trib, rapture. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 9, 29, and when he was come into the house, the blind man came to him and saith unto him, believe ye, that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. And then Jesus touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. 
and, and their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that thou, thou see that no man know it. But they, when they departed, spread abroad his fame all in the country. Now Jesus said, According to your faith, be it unto you. And they were healed. But the Pharisees said, He casts out devils through the prince of devils. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Hebrews says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. This is Hebrews 4, 1 through 3. The word preached unto them did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in, because of unbelief. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. Now there's scriptures pointing to rapture, pre-tribulation rapture. There's other scriptures saying that Christians will go through the tribulation. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders, elders obtained a good report through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Now this is Hebrews 11. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Why? Because of Enoch's faith. So I want you to believe and pray God I know it's possible. I know you can deliver me. I know you're the same fourth man that appeared in life's fire in, in Shadrach, Meshach's burning fiery furnace. And I know that our God is able. The question is, am I worthy, Lord? I pray that I'm worthy to escape. For without faith, it's impossible to please him. Joshua and Caleb went into the promised land while those lacking faith did not. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the burning fiery furnace because of their faith. Mm -hmm. They said, our God is able. Now, your faith has a lot to do with it. That's why you need to get the scriptures in you, and they're all in here in this study guide, and you read it, you focus on it, concentrate on it, and don't let the Pharisees and the scribes rob from you what God wants to give you. What happens if we're wrong? If we're wrong, we'll worry about that at the time. Mm -hmm. The people who, who are post-tribulation period, I've never met one yet who doesn't get angry because we're pre-tribulation rapture. Most of them don't tithe. They're not very happy people, and I know why they're not happy, because they have no faith. But we have faith that our God is able. I have faith that God can heal, and I buried my friends from cancer. God did not heal them the way I wanted them to. But I know my God is able. But if you have your appointed time unto death, then you have to accept it. And through faith, I accept their appointed time to be called home. Now, let's look at what post-tribulation people, non-believers, have to look forward to. Now, they do believe in God's judgment, but not in His power to deliver them. Remember, Jesus said to the Sadducees and Pharisees, your traditions have made the word of God of none effect. He sent His word to heal them, but if they didn't have faith in that word, they weren't healed. And if you do have faith and you still don't get healed, that's between you and God. 
And that doesn't mean you don't have any faith. I don't, I don't have all the answers. Uh, but I know I've been healed. Definitely. Um, I've been healed through medicine. I've been healed through operations. Uh, I've been healed through prayer and eating properly. The, the different streams of healing. Yes. Now, we all know that the four riders of the apocalypse is what kicks off the tribulation period. Now, Karen, on, on page seven, <clears throat> do we have that? Do, do we have uh, Revelation six and one? Yes. I want you to read that. Okay. Revelation, Revelation six, six and, and one. one. And I am going to put on the screen um, so that you can see it. I'm going to put on the screen the four riders of the apocalypse so that you can see it. Now you read. Okay. Uh, Revelation 6, 1. And you'll hear my voice as we're talking. And I, John, saw when the Lamb, Jesus, opened the first seal. Two. And I saw a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Okay, this is the white horse. Mm -hmm. He went forth to conquer and to, to conquer and to conquer. Um, okay, I guess I don't have the... Um, right here. I, I don't have the, the cursor on there. Okay, that's the first white horse. You can see him with the white horse. He conquers the ten nations... And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. They have to convince the ten, were, ten nations to join him. And that's in Revelation 17, 12. Now they release the, the second horse, the red horse. Go ahead. Revelation 6, 3. And a second seal was opened, 4. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Okay, this is referring to four verses later. The red horse comes and it says, and the Revelation 17, 16, and the ten horns that you saw, remember they joined the beast in Revelation 17, 12, they will hate the woman, the prostitute, and they will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her with fire. Now, it says a great sword in his hand. That's a weapon. That's how God communicated to John saying that it was a great sword. Today, we would call that sword a weapon of mass destruction. And because it's fire, it's going to be nuclear. Now... Um, Revelation 17, 17 says, For God has put it into their hearts, into the beast and into the ten nations, to carry out His purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. This happens at the very beginning of the tribulation period. Right at the beginning, the four riders of the apocalypse. Now, we have a third horse, a black horse, and that is on page 10, Karen. Okay. Page 10. Yeah. I've got, you've got a gray horse and a pale horse. So, okay, it should the be the black horse. horse. Uh, right, the third horse. The third horse is a black horse, and when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Now that refers, balances is referring to money. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. As soon as the red horse is released and destroys Babylon, who is the number one commercial entity in the world, the money changes. Mm -hmm. There is a... It, a in, Instantly, within a day, the whole money system changes because the, the, the nation that's, that's sitting on all the other nations, her, the money system's gone. The currency's removed. gone. It's removed. They're mm -hmm. no longer printing. Mm -hmm. 
And then the pale horse comes along. Let's look at the pale horse. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Okay. Now, can I come back on, Chris? Oh, uh, can I come back on? Oh, okay, I'm on now. There's a thing called telescopic prophecy that I want to explain to you. Telescopic prophecy means that John sees a vision, and it's over a seven-year period as the tribulation period. We have a video that we've created. It lasts about two minutes and we're gonna play it for you. It's gonna be in our 19th TV show, so I'm kind of stealing from our TV show, but it's so hard to explain everything without video and pictures. This is gonna to help to explain. Telescopic prophecy means that there's progressive stages of intensity within these four writers of the apocalypse. For example, CNN did a study, if a, if a, a, a dirty bomb were released, in um, LA, a dirty bomb the size of a Coke can, they did a study and they said uh, within the first hour, 36,000 people would die. Over the next several months, around 120,000 people would die from the nuclear fallout. And of course, within a year, it would affect all the water, the fresh water and everything. So if you were a prophet like John, and you saw the destruction of, let's say, L.A., your first vision would be, and I saw fire fall down and immediately consume 36,000 souls. Now he has a second vision of the same city, but it's telescoped out to a different time frame. Three weeks later, he has the vision of the same city, and he says, and I saw 120 people, and I saw sores on their arms and, and, and breaking out all over them. The nuclear fallout, and it kills another 120. Mm -hmm. Then he has another vision, maybe let's say a year later of that same city, but it's telescopic out, and he looks and he says, and I saw the water, the fresh water uh, embittered, and I saw the sea give forth the dead and it was red. They're all the results of one event. This is called telescopic prophecy. Now, throughout the tribulation, there are environmental um, judgments that come on the whole earth. Now, I wanna say something else too. When God judges, when he judged Egypt, what he did, he did 10 judgments and each judgment pulled down each God that the Egyptians relied on. In Latter-day Babylon, the Bible says, your knowledge and your wisdom has perverted you. You will hear today people talking about, we believe in science, we believe in technology. They have replaced science and technology for instead of trusting in God, that's exactly what God is going to knock out. Mm -hmm. He's gonna knock out the science, he's gonna knock out the electrical circuits, he's gonna knock out all the technology in North America, he's gonna knock down all those gods in one hour. Now it may not be the whole planet at once, or, or the whole nation at once, but a, a 30,000 ton, um, not 30,000. A, a bomb released 30,000 feet over Chicago, a nuclear bomb at a certain size, has the potential to knock out every electrical circuit in North America. Now this is what, this is what they've said in the, in the uh, um, military reports. But it has to be at 30,000 feet. And it has the potential, the electrical mag, electric, electric, magnetic pulse, EMP. the electromagnetic pulse of that explosion could knock out every electrical circuit. That's what's gonna happen in North America. 
Also, the Bible says, I will render double unto her what's in her cup. Babylon holds a cup in her hand. In that cup is the blood of prophets and saints. America has, and Canada, have sacrificed over 60 million children to the God of Baal. Now, Baal is a Babylonian religion where if you sacrifice your, God, your child to the God of Moloch, you give it to, your child to, to Moloch, they burned it in his hands. It was a, a large statue. They sacrificed that child and they were asking for prosperity. The number one reason of abortion today is because people can't afford it. And they figure if they abort the child, that, that they will prosper. It's the same parallel. Right. It's, it's the same parallel. <laughs> the Bible says, uh, the shedding of innocent blood will not be pardoned except by the blood of him that shed it. We've shed 60 million children in North America. In one hour, he says, I will render double unto you, Babylon, what you've rendered unto me. If you've done it to the least of these, my children, you've done it unto me. This means that it's possible 120 million people will die in one day. When this event takes place in the four riders of the apocalypse. Now that is astounding when you say 120 million people. But it's, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what happens over the next seven years. Because one third of mankind dies in the tribulation. One third of seven billion people is 2.1 billion people. That's 450 million people a year are going to die from the fallout of that one hour. Now this makes COVID look like a cakewalk, yeah. but this is what the Bible says. And from that one hour event, from that great sword, the environmental plagues will come out and spread around the world. I am praying to God that I am worthy to escape this, and you need to be too. <laughs> we pray to God, and we pray for you, and we're doing this because we're trying to be obedient and warning people what's coming. Um, now we're going to look at this video, and we've put it together, and you're going to look at the four riders of the apocalypse, and we're going to focus on the red horse and how telescopic prophecy will, will, through the seven years, watch and see what happens from that one hour, that great sword that's released in Babylon the Great. Watch what happens over seven years. Now, this is a video and uh, it's got audio, so I'm not going to be talking, but you'll be listening to the audio. Now, Chris, do I click this and make it happen? I'll do it. Okay, Chris is going to give you that video right now. In our quest for understanding, we will use a time sequence chart showing the four riders of the apocalypse at the top of the chart, represented as the first four seals. However, we will just focus on the red horse for now. It will be his great sword that produces many of the environmental judgments that are time sequence throughout the seven year tribulation period. The plagues are listed as seven seals and seven trumpets and seven bowls. And we can see at the top of the chart, the second seal is represented by the red horse. Following behind the seals are the trumpets. As we look at the numbers involved with each trumpet, we can see the progressive stages of intensity over the following seven years. Now, we speculate that these are the direct results of a nuclear blast delivered to Babylon from the red horse of war. And it's important to note that the trumpets and bowls and their time sequences are not exact as we compare them. But as we connect the dots, there is definitely a time sequence pattern of the environmental judgments over the seven year period. Beginning with the trumpets, we see that initially in the first year, one third of the trees are burnt, obviously with fire coinciding with the red horse releasing a fiery judgment on Babylon the Great. But by the second year or stage two of the trumpets, 
John sees one third of the sea dying. By year three, the fresh water is embittered around the globe. These are all the progressive stages of nuclear fallout. When we look at the bowls, we see a very similar progression. In year two, the sea turns to blood, very similar to trumpet number two. In bowl number three, it specifically describes the fresh water which has been embittered by the fallout seeping out of Babylon. Trumpet four represents the sun, the moon, and the stars not shining. Now this is speculative that the smoke and dust of the nuclear blast has entered the first two levels of the atmosphere and are creating this phenomenon of blocking the sun. Meanwhile, bowl number four references the same sun scorching men. A nuclear blast of certain magnitude has the ability to affect the ozone layer. The ozone layer protects us from harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun. And without that protective layer, the sun can do more damage than good, and in this case, it scorches men. These are the environmental judgments that are described in the tribulation period. Okay, we're back with you now. That is going to be on television probably in about six weeks. Um, we're working on the animations and, and to make it so that it's crystal clear. Now, I just want to go back over with you uh, step by step, just in case you didn't get all of it. I, I realize this can be very complicated, but um, I'm going to put on my screen again, uh, Chris, and we're going to go off and you're going to see the screen in front of you. Are we on there now? Okay, we're still waiting. I'm going to show you the screen with the telescopic uh, chart on it. So you can see now the telescopic chart, and you can see at the top with the four riders of the apocalypse. Now we just, we just looked at the red horse. So at the end of the video that you just saw, here are all of the um, environmental judgments that come from that red horse. Now look at how they're spread over possibly a four or five year period. So this is all the direct results of God judging Babylon the Great. Mm -hmm. And there's seven scriptures that in one hour she'll be desolated. In one hour the fire will consume her. In one hour the merchants of the earth will stand in the fear of her torment. In one hour all 27 products that she traded with is made to nothing. This is, this is the biggest, one of the biggest days in Christianity when that red horse and the four riders are released. And they are not coming to Europe. Their first appearance is going to be in the United States of America because from Babylon will come all the plagues. And, and uh, now here are, as you look in front of you, you see these red uh, blocks, a third of the grass, a third of the sea, a third of the fresh water, a third of the sun, the seas turn to blood, uh, fresh waters turn to blood and then the sun scorches men. Now, if you look at the black horse, the black horse has to do with government. Now, the black horse in seal number three, if you look at bowl number one, you see that the black horse also affects those who receive the mark of the beast will have sores on them. Now, that doesn't mean the very first day, but that could be six weeks later. But that is one of the telescopic uh, stages of intensity that comes as the sores come on men, they're also taking the mark of the beast. Now, if you are post-tribulation, do not take a mark on your right hand or on your forehead. The Bible says if you do that, you will lose your soul you're going to have to have a lot more faith in, in the tribulation than you have now to believe that God is able to deliver you. Mm -hmm. 
So I wish you the very, very best. God bless you if you are post-tribulation. Now, it also says in seal number five that the white robes, that there were white robes in heaven waiting for others to come. Mm -hmm. Do we have that fifth seal? Can you read that yeah. on page 10, yeah. Karen? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. These folks are post-tribulation believers who are going to have to give up their life. Now, I'm going to come off of there. I'm going to exit. And Chris, are we on the, the uh, we're back on this one? It says here, these servants also and their brethren should be killed. And the white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest a little while. They came out of the tribulation because they were killed by the Antichrist for not taking the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Now there are five references to the tribulation saints. Revelation 6, 9, that's what we're looking at. Revelation 7, 19, and I saw those coming out of great tribulation, given white robes. Revelations 12, 11, and they overcame him, for they loved not their lives unto death. These, this is what, folks, you're going to have your heads cut off. This is what's going to happen. The new world order is like Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin all rolled into one. If you do not join them and you do not take the mark, they are going to kill you. And in Revelation 14, it says, Blessed are they who die in the Lord from now on. Now, if you don't have faith to even, and I don't want to get too much into this, but if you don't have faith to even offer God your first fruits to help people that are starving, if you don't have faith to believe, you're going to have to have a lot of faith in the tribulation period. You're going to have, a, have to have a supernatural outpouring of faith. And that's why it's so important that Jesus begged the churches, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. This is coming. It's coming. Get your house in order. Stop committing adultery. Stop committing fornication, stop lying, stop cheating, stop doing dead works, get your head on, get into the Word, and get close to me. Now, these saints are in the tribulation period. These are post-tribulation believers. These are uh, pre-trib rapture non-believers. 50% of the bride does not go up. But in Revelation 19.7, after the destruction of Babylon, immediately it says in Revelation 19.7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to God, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. These are the pre-tribulation rapture saints who are ha hanging on to the promise of God, saying, our God is able. Our God can heal. Our God can deliver. Our God, I just pray, Lord, that I'm worthy to escape. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. The post-tribulation people are killed, but the bride of Christ is called out of Babylon. And that word called is kalo. It means summoned. It means to invite. It means to call by name. Mm. 
God calls with his voice and calls us out. As the judgment comes down, the bride goes up. And yes, there's going to be Christians go through the tribulation. You people that are preaching that and saying that, you're absolutely right. You have faith for it, but you're going to have a, need a lot more faith on the other side than what you got now. And you better have seven years of food stored up because within two days after the red horse is released, you're not going to go downtown and buy food at your store. They're going to initiate this thing with the mark of the beast and you're not going to buy or sell. You're not going to get gas at the gas station. In fact, if you're in North America, your car probably won't even work. It's going to be, as Jesus Christ said, such as was not since the beginning of man. People are going to pray to die. It's going to be terrible. And I am a prosperity guy. I believe that God wishes above all things that you prosper and be in health. I am not a doom and gloomer, but I did not write the Bible. I'm just reading what it says is coming, and I know it's coming. And those who have ears to hear, you turn on your TV and you know things are coming unhinged. God's handing people over to darkness, and they're, they've gone crazy. Now, we're going to go back on here, and I have one left uh, to show you. Chris, if you can put the screen on. It's on? Okay. The gray horse is after the black horse. And it says, death, famine, and pestilence in a quarter of the earth. The military, uh, in, in trumpet number five, you have a military, you have description of large bugs and stuff. We don't know if that's describing military or it could be mutated bugs. I don't know. Um, but in bowl number five, it says, uh, darkness comes upon the beasts and the beasts will kill. Maybe that means that the beasts... Uh, become infected with pestilence and rabies and they're killing people? I don't know. But these are the progressive stages of intensity. Now, at the sixth and seventh year, you can see where the governments, the white horse and the governments of the earth are not getting along. And in trumpet number six, a 200 million man army comes across the Euphrates to fight the Antichrist and a third of the men are slain. The rivers on the Euphrates on bull number six are dried up. That's to accommodate a 200 million man army that's coming across to battle in the battle of Armageddon. In the seventh, uh, seventh trumpet, a kingdom is proclaimed, the second coming takes place in the seventh trumpet, and an earthquake shakes the world and God says, it is done. And the saints come down with 10,000. Jesus comes down with 10,000 of his saints. And every knee bows and every tongue confesses, he is God. <laughs> we can go back now, Chris. Back to that. So those are the telescopic progressive stages of intensity that the People who do not believe in pre-tribulation, guaranteed you're going to go through it. And if you want to stand on all of those five scriptures that says that they're going to be killed and they're going to be tortured, you can do that. But to the rest of you who are with me and Karen, we are voting pre-tribulation rapture. <laughs> Shake me up, Lord, because I don't want to be in this. No. So though, for those of you who are troubled, Paul said, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and believe not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the description of the rapture. He's going to appear in flaming fire and we're out of here. Folks, we are out of time. It's 8.06. This is going to be... Uh, taught on TV. Uh, it's more concise uh, on TV because we have a limited time. But uh, I wanted to share this with you and you got a sneak preview 
of what the, the TV audience is going to see. And by the way, Joy TV, uh, we've changed our time slot from 9.30 Pacific time on Thursday. We're going to be on Thursdays twice and on Sundays twice. So we've got, we switched out our prime time in Joy TV and come September we're going to be on, on four times a week. And we are looking at expanding our TV. If, if you're enjoying the TV, let your, let your uh, local station know that you're enjoying Prophecy USA. Just let them know. And if you're not enjoying it, don't call them. <laughs> <laughs> we are not here to scare you to death. Uh... We are here to preach the uncompromising gospel of Jesus Christ and that our God is able to deliver you from COVID and from any weapon formed against you. We are pro-America, we're pro-Jesus Christ, and we are pro for you that, we, that God and us wishes above all things that you prosper and be in health. But surely the Lord will do nothing unless he reveal it unto his servants, the prophets, and you are prophetic. God speaks directly to you now in this book. And sometimes he uses other people to help you hear, and that's what he's using me for, to show you things in Scripture. So, folks, thank you so much. Um, this is our 24th, and we'll see you next week. My name is Rick Pearson, and this is Karen Pearson, my wife. She doesn't, she doesn't get to talk much because I do most of the talking. <laughs> But uh, that's quite fine that's by me. Quite fine. <laughs> um, this is Prophecy USA um, reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people think. We'll see you next week on our podcast. God bless you. Thanks for listening. <laughs>